Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So good morning. Welcome to another market open stream. The U.S. markets are set to open in two minutes. But today I want to concentrate on one, what one major bank said according to their no, own internal indicator, which is quite interesting. It looks very, very similar to the greed and fear index. So let's take a look at that. Let's look at what's going on with Bitcoin overall. And let's look at several crypto projects. There are major developments that's happening right now. So let's get started. Smash it a like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Follow me on social media. Check out CryptosRus.com and follow the new CryptosRus Clips channel. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, 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 and welcome. Take a look. This morning, looking pretty darn good so far. Bitcoin is above 21,000, and uh, the U.S. market is looking like it's going to turn very, very green today. So there could be like a relief rally today. Dow up about 400 right now. NASDAQ 180. So it does seem like, at least today, Wall Street may be trying to forget what happened last week, forget what's happening with recession, forget what's happening with rate hikes. Um, so we'll see what happens today. Sometimes we see very massive greens in a futures market, and then it just turns sideways or breaks to, to zero by the mid or end of day. Let's see what happens. But we do know that last week was the worst week on record for S&P 500. So it makes sense that this week we do see a little bit of recovery. And, and um, that is why I think Bitcoin is up slightly. Now, do I think Bitcoin has hit that. Ooh, it's it's a market open already. 8.30. Let's see. All right. Market opens. So we don't have to wait long to see what happens. But do I think that Bitcoin has hit its bottom at that 17K mark, right? Well, I think this week will tell us. I think a lot of people are expecting another double bottom or something close to it where we come back down to around the same levels, right? I think this week will be a very telling week in terms of whether or not Bitcoin holds above 20,000 and it kind of continues forward or we're going to see more weakness from the market and drive everything lower. So um, let's wait and see what happens. But I found something that I think explained at least why Bitcoin had this horrific drop right here. Remember I said, you know, yeah, Bitcoin was, you know, kind of hovering around 20,000 for a little bit, right? And then all of a sudden we had this massive spike and then a little bit more fear right before the weekend, right? And I did finally see this and then, and then it makes sense. Uh, this is purpose Bitcoin ETF. This is the very first Bitcoin spot ETF from the company Purpose from Canada. And you could see on Friday, I think this is Friday, Thursday, Friday, that someone basically sold out half, half of their shares, which made Purpose, the fund um, company, sell off about 24,000 Bitcoins in a single day. So the number of Bitcoins in this spot ETF basically decreased by half within a single day. So there's definitely some big player, big whale that, that kind of drove this or caused this maybe to get that, that you know, get the price to go lower or, or whatever it may be, right? Could be BlackRock because BlackRock on the, over the weekend all of a sudden turned bullish on Bitcoin. Who knows, right? But I did see this. So this, I think, probably had a lot to do with what we saw last Friday. But, you know, um, just want to share that. Just want to share that. All right. What else is going on? Well, let's talk about this new kind of like internal indicator from Bank of America. So... Not that we really care about what Bank of America says or what any bank really says about 
Bitcoin or the economy because their analysts seem to be flip-flopping each and every day. So it's really hard to tell. But we know that in the crypto world, a lot of us look at the fear and greed index and it's at extreme, extreme fear. We're still hovering at nine and seven or six or whatever it was recently was the, the all-time high in terms of fear. But I did mention about the fear and greed index. Uh, you got to take it with a grain of salt because 15% of the weight is from social media, which is full of bots and trolls more so now than ever before. This also measures Bitcoin dominance, which is very different. You measure Bitcoin dominance in 2017 and 2018 versus 2022, very different. Right. Bitcoin dominance is going to be lower than previously when when it was at like 60 or 70 percent. Right. And Google Trends, I think this is relevant, but still Google Trends uh, is less impactful now than before, because back in 2017, 2018, there were a lot less people that that knew and heard about Bitcoin versus 2022. So anyways, uh, even though this is a, a good indicator um, some of the weight for for how they come up with the numbers is you know is not all that accurate I would say anymore compared to before. Anyways, but my point is yes, a lot of us do follow this, and I saw this. Bank of America has their own indicator called Bull and Bear Indicator, and that indicator has just dropped to zero. <laughs> it was at point two, which is already extremely bearish. But it has dropped to zero. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You could see at the very bottom, it says extreme bearish and extreme bullish, right? But also writes in there whether or not you should buy and sell. Basically, you're trying to go against the, the market sentiment, which is extremely, extremely bearish. I saw this headline on, on Market Watch. History says the next bull market is just months away and it could carry the S&P 500 to the 6,000 level, according to Bank of America. So they are looking at history. They're looking at how much the S&P 500 has gone down, where it is now, right? And looking at previous times, like major corrections and, and recession times, when the market start flipping back above, they're looking all that and they're like, well, this looks very similar to some of those previous times, especially if you utilize this indicator, which is something that I've been telling you guys about, something that, that contrarians follow and something that Warren Buffett and many major investors say is when every, everyone else is turning bearish, when everyone is bleeding out. And you may be too. That's when you want to buy. And that's exactly what this indicator says. When you have extreme bearishness in the market, that's when you want to pick up. And when you have extreme bullishness in the market, that's usually when you want to sell. And that's the hardest thing to do, I would say, is to take profits on the way up. But right now, basically, it's a good time to buy, according to Bank of America. Okay, And then they have this chart about all these returns. Had you bought at the bottom... And, and it shows you all these returns afterwards. So they're using history and data to kind of come up with this. And I think it's, it's very relevant for, for crypto industry too because whatever there's a lot of fear, everyone just keeps saying, yeah, let's go, go down, go down and down and down, and this must happen, and that must happen, and then, and then majority of people just sit on the sidelines and, and miss out on all the tremendous gains, right? So... Very important lesson and very important overall, just basically f when it comes to investing. All right. Now, what else is there? Um, Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor urges governments to step in and regulate crypto's parade of horribles. That's, that's an interesting way to put it. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, half of the point of, of crypto really or you could argue maybe even more than half, um, is decentralization, right? Power to the people. You don't have major, you know, centralized entities trying to control things, right? That's the whole point of Bitcoin and, and blockchain and decentralization and nodes and mining and all this stuff, right? Um, but 
Michael Saylor disagrees. So he wants governments to step in and regulate a lot of the, 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 the crypto projects that can be seen as securities and can be seen as very risky, right? So rather than let the market figure it out, he wants governments to come in and start regulating hard. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I do recognize that some regulations could be good to prevent fraud and to prevent you know, major catastrophes, but to, to really come in and regulate everything, you know, I don't think that would be good for an entire market. So, um, But you know, this is one of the reasons why Michael Saylor have said that he doesn't like anything outside of Bitcoin because he believes that regulators will regulate the hell out of everything and basically destroy pretty much everything outside of Bitcoin, right? This is something that he's been, he's been saying for quite some time. But anyways, all right, what else is going on? Uh, let's see here. Well, when in doubt, zoom out, right? So this is exactly zooming out, but in a, in a numbers format. So as you can see, if you are worried about Bitcoin, you are worried about recent slump, you're worried about where we are, just look at the performance versus USD. Past year, yeah, past year, not so good, right? But S&P 500, not so good either. But look at year two, look at year three, four, five, six, ten, right? So when in doubt, zoom out. This is why Bitcoin is still the best hedge against inflation. Maybe if you're looking at it day to day, month to month, maybe even year of year, you would say, well, maybe not. But any extended period of time, you'll see that it is. It is the best hedge against inflation because there's nothing that outperformed it. Nothing has come close to the 10 year or five year return or whatever year return versus Bitcoin, right? So a friendly reminder, friendly reminder. What else is going on? Yesterday, I talked about addresses holding over one Bitcoin at an all-time high, meaning holders are still holding. New people are coming in and becoming long-term holders. Today, I'm showing you addresses holding 0.1. Some of you guys don't have one Bitcoin, but I think a majority of you guys watching at least have 0.1 Bitcoin. And again, it doesn't change the number of addresses holding at least 0.1 Bitcoin is at a record high, all-time high. And if you look at it, it's probably over close to 3.7 million addresses. That's a lot, right? And it's still growing. So despite the negativity and the FUD out there, there are many that are taking advantage. And there are many getting into space right now when things are down and low. Not everyone, it seems like, is panic selling. Many are panic buying right now. So this is also very encouraging. And there's a lot more addresses that show 0.01 or 10 or 100, whatever it may be. And they're all going upwards and breaking into all-time highs. All right, so that's got really good. And here, what's interesting is the amount of supply last active in 10 years have risen up to about 2.5 million. So most likely, most likely, this is the number of Bitcoins that are basically lost forever. Because you figure if someone didn't move anything, right, within the last 10 years, most likely they either passed away or they lost, they lost their keys. And this is the supply that is gone forever. And why is this is important? Because one of the things that we pay attention to when it comes to Bitcoin is its scarcity. Right now, Bitcoin has approximately, um, oh, I took that off, but approximately about 19 million out there, right? But is it really 19 million? When you consider 2.5 million has not moved in the last 10 years. So really, you could th say, well, if it hasn't moved for 10 years, it's probably not going to move ever. So you subtract that off, right? And then not to mention Shatoshi stack and other people's stack, right? Um, it adds up and it really makes you realize that Bitcoin is scarce and only getting scarcer as we move forward. So also 
friendly reminder of that. All right, now, what else is going on? Um, Vitalik, Vitalik, Vitalik from Ethereum. I don't know. He, I don't. I, I don't. I don't see the point of this of doing this right now. But we know that you know Plan B start to flow pretty much has been invalidated, right? But it was the one model a lot of us looked at because if you project it from before, you know, you look at going all the way back to about 2010 and all the way up to about 2021, it was pretty darn accurate. Even Plan B said at some point it's going to become invalidated. And we know that a model like this can't possibly predict macro factors, right? Like within with global printing, with inflation sky high. Also can't predict wars, can't predict supply chain issues. This is basically merely looking at Bitcoin supply and it's having events. And then that's really it, right? So at some point we knew it was going to be invalidated. But now, you know, even Vitalik is jumping in and attacking the model. Stock to flow is really not looking good now. I know it's impolite to gloat and all that, but I think financial models that give people so false sense of certainty and predestination, the number will go up are harmful and deserves all the mockery they get. As if Vitalik never made any mistakes himself, right? Like at this point in time, when the market is weak, there's no point of attacking, right? This is the time to be supporting each other. It's not like Plan B tried to dupe everyone on purpose. He just came up with a model that was globally accepted, basically, and it worked until it doesn't. It didn't. I mean, all models are like that. Charts work until they don't, right? Indicators work until they don't. So it's it just a little bit surprise, surprising, and I think this is really beneath him. Why come up with this now, right? Um, and it's just go add more hate to the community. So I, I don't quite know. I don't quite understand the, the, the reason for this, but anyways, thought I'd bring that up. Um, what else is there? Well, recently, we know about lending companies, right? A lot of fun around Celsius. Voyager took out a $500 million loan for Alameda Research, right? And guess who else just took a big loan today? My partner, BlockFi. So Zach Prince, who is a co-CEO, said that they secured a $250 million revolving credit from FTX. I don't know. Sam Bankman-Fried seems to have unlimited amount of money. So he just gave $500 million to Voyager. Now $250 million to BlockFi for the same reasons, basically to secure their platform and making sure that their balance sheet holds up, I'm assuming, to prevent any kind of bank runs or anything that's about to happen. So um, so every lending company out there is taking, securing cash right now, right? Securing as much cash as they can to prevent any further downsides. So I don't know still what's going on with Celsius. I know there is some kind of labeled community pump, which I still think has nothing to do with the community. I think it's still whale driven, but I have not heard of Celsius come out saying that, you know, they have secured a, a billion dollar, you know, credit or loan from FTX or Alameda or whoever. Maybe they're working with Binance. Maybe they're working with someone else. I don't know who in the space has the amount of money that I guess FTX has or Binance has, right? I, I Again, I, I don't even know how FTX has so much money. But anyways, um, that is the latest with BlockFi. Now, what else is there? Um, Tron. You know, I'm mentioning about USDD and how it's off peg. So Tron Dow said they just bought $10 million worth of USDD. And Tron, again, trying to stabilize the peg, I'm, I'm assuming, it's, it's, it's not working. I don't know what it is with their peg. I, I just don't know what it is. Supposedly, they're over collateralized and, and there's no worries about the D peg, yet it's still not at $1. So I don't actually quite know what's going on with it. Just, just be careful with Tron and USDD and lending and stuff like that. All right, lastly, some good news. If you're a VeChain fan, well, VeChain 2.0 
is coming. And it was just implemented on a test net. And I didn't even understand it, but it seems like VeChain 2.0 is going to bring some crazy stuff, including double verification, <laughs> double validation of transactions, making it basically impossible for invalid transactions to happen or forks to happen. So it's going to be super secure. And obviously, VeChain are trying to make big waves with the West, right? Moving their headquarters to Europe. They signed a $100 million sponsorship deal with the UFC. So they are definitely pushing forward. So that's good for VeChain. All right. That is pretty much it. You know what? Let's take a look at the U.S. market. Pretty good. NASDAQ up 256. Dow up 467. So, so far, so good. We haven't seen a reversal. And so far, so good for Bitcoin, too. 21,500. And I've been mentioning about Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is still holding 43.3%. Ethereum dominance is still quite low. Ethereum dominance was high as 20%. So Ethereum is still weaker at this point. But many other projects, right, starting to come up. People are DCAing, taking advantage of cheap prices. Today, surprisingly, Sheeb is up. Well, jeez, <laughs> it just refreshed. Uh, Sheeb is up 31%. So there's a lot of enthusiasm over Sheeb right now. Uh, Doge is up 12% because of Elon. And many others like Polygon, which has been decimated recently, up about 12%. So that's good. You know, today's overall is a pretty, pretty good green day. So let's, let's cherish in that. All right, let's do some Q&A. London Link says Saturday was the day for cheap prices. Yes. I mean, anything right now is cheap. The, the fact that Bitcoin is hovering around 21.5 or 20, or 18, 17, right? But I would argue anything <laughs> below, um, you know, 30,000 is damn cheap, damn cheap. So it's kind of like what this, this Bank of America bull and bear index, right? The more bearish the market gets, the better the buying opportunity, right? So that we've been extremely bearish for quite some time. Right. And right now, I, I've been saying we're a lot closer to bottom than we are at top. That's for sure. Right. So I've been DCA more and more. And I do think that we will, you know, we will find that bottom and continue forward. But right now, I think we have to wait and see what happens this week. I think this week will be a very telling week. Right. It'll be the very first week after the rate hike. We'll see what happens with the Fed. You know, there's a lot of news about the Fed, about recession. We'll see how Wall Street reacts, and we'll see how Bitcoin holds up this week. And can it continue forward and hold above 20,000 and start a slow recovery up, or we go see a little bit more weakness? So I think it's an important week. Uh, let me make sure. Let me scroll up. Let's see if we missed anything. Where can I find a chart you showed of VC's holdings per coin previously? Just go on Google and type exactly that, and you'll find it. Um, go under images, and you'll see it. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Someone said, hey, how about Vitalik fixed the... Uh, F and F piece. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying. Um, are these loans from Sam Bankman Freed still a form of leverage? No, they're line of credit. Basically, they're there, and there's probably some kind of interest, you know, for having that line of credit. And Voyager and BlockFi can just take it whenever they need it, right? But it shows you how much money Sam Bankman Freed has. I mean, he, he's basically the one person that was credited for Solana's, like, rise. Because at one point in time, Solana, this was really back in the day, 
like 2019, 2020, when Solana was deemed dead, he's the one person that basically said, I'm not going to let Solana die. And he just kept investing and investing, investing in Solana. So it shows you how much money he, he has on the side. What do you think about Hive Mapper? Joseph, I've never heard that before. It's an interesting name, though. What is your view on how reliable the hardware wallets are in long term? Are you talking about the hardware itself? The hardware itself is irre irrelevant. They could break. It doesn't matter. The most important thing about hardware wallets or any wallet is that recovery phrase, the recovery key. That is... That is the most important because that's how you could recover um, your private keys. So if you've got a ledger and it gets stolen, it gets smashed, it accidentally you know, gets dropped in the pool, right? It doesn't matter. You get a new one and you can recover. There's no problem, right? And even you could argue, well, what if ledger goes down? It doesn't matter. With that private key, you can extract, or the recovery phrase, I should say, you can extract your private key for your Bitcoin wallet and still remove your Bitcoin despite the fact that the company went under. That, that's kind of the thing. Um, so the hardware itself is really irrelevant. The most important thing is the recovery key. It's the same thing with mobile wallet. If you download Trust Wallet on your phone, your phone gets lost, stolen, it's irrelevant. What's relevant is that recovery phrase so that you can download the app again and download your wallet again, right? So that is the most important thing you want to safeguard is your private key or your recovery phrase. Is Kraken safe? You know, I, I've used Kraken way back in the day, but I have not touched them for quite some time. So I, I have not used them for years. So I can't really say. But they're one of the bigger exchanges in the U.S. I would say that just by being based in the U.S. or being in the U.S. should make it a little bit more safer than some of the external or foreign exchanges out there. Gank man. The hardware you pick is not irrelevant. Some sketchy ones. Well, obviously, I'm talking about something like Ledger and Treasure, Arculus, like companies that people know of and have used and has been around for quite some time. Not some like new new wallet that comes out and you see a Google ad and you think it's the best wallet ever. Obviously, that's what I mean, right? Trustworthy wallets. If Binance goes under, does Trust Wallet gets wiped? No, it does not. Uh, what about Coinbase Wallet? Coinbase Wallet is also non-custodial. I, and I have used Coinbase Wallet. Uh, even though it's labeled Coinbase Wallet, right? Um, it's really, it's just wallet on its own. It does have a close connection with Coinbase if you want to link up your Coinbase account. But even if you don't, you can still use it just the same. I would say Trust Wallet is still better than Coinbase Wallet, but Coinbase Wallet is a pretty good one too. It, it has a DAP store also, so you can you know, access uh, DEXs if you wanted to straight from it. And it pretty much supports you know, every ERC-20 token. Um, so it's a pretty decent one. Uh, BDC maxis are disrupting value of innovation. Uh, yeah, but, you know, some people believe in Bitcoin, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to only believe in Bitcoin, nothing wrong with that, right? But I do think that all coins, even though vast majority of the 20,000, you could probably argue 99.9% .9 of the 20,000 are irrelevant and not, and, and, most, and they don't even need a crypto, let's just put, and they could perish and die off, right? But the ones that do survive, I think, will be powerhouses of the future. They will bring on new innovation and bring on new things that we can't even think of right now, right? So that's how I see it. I see Bitcoin as a digital gold, as a store of value, as, as simple as that. And I see everything else as a form of, you know, companies, right, creating technologies that we'll use in the future. That's why I, I never saw the two compete. But, you know, a lot of Bitcoin maxis will purposely 
you know, say that, well, all coins are ruining Bitcoin and this and that. I, I just don't see it that way. Noah, uh, been DCA since I learned from you over a year ago. Now everyone talks about DCA. Trust in George. I appreciate that. Although many people are not trusting in DCA right now, but it is something that, you know, I've used for a very long time. Now, obviously, my mistake on trying to DCA into Terra more when it was going down, I did not anticipate that they will completely destroy themselves. So obviously, in that case, it didn't work. Um, but for everything else, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for many of the other crypto like BNB, right, that's been around for 2017, I DCA'd those suckers going all the way down to the the bare minimum or bottom end of 2018. I continue to do so till now. It's worked out very well for me. So I believe and trust in DCA. It does work. Um, can you show us the BDC chart and monthly? It shows the price retrace back up above the 50 moving average. All right, Bitcoin is starting to move a little bit. So that's good. All right, so you're talking about the month. Let's see. I don't have the 50. Well, maybe I do. Uh, that is, I believe, what, are, what is the yellow one I have? Yeah, that is the 50. So you're right. So you could see, well, the 50 looks very, very similar to the 200 weekly moving average. But yeah, if you look at the yellow line, you could see back in 2018, right? It utilized it as support. 2020, it kind of, although it wicked down a little bit, right? And same thing right now. We did wick down below, but we could definitely come up. Keep in mind, each uh, candlestick here, each bar is a month. So we, if Bitcoin has significant rally, we could definitely see this kind of recover a little bit more. And we see that, that down wick just like before, right? Not bad. Looking good. Looking good. And, of course, if you go into weekly... Oh, if you look at a weekly, right, we're still a little bit below the 200 weekly moving average, right? That average is about 22.4, 22.5, so we're still a little below that, but we are definitely, we got that green, and RSI is coming up from extremely oversold levels. Stochastic is also coming up, um, or looking like it wants to come up. Um, MACD has not flipped yet, but could be soon so we will have to see what happens this week Fibonacci, uh nick says fibonacci from march of 2020 low to all-time high current 23 percent bounces right off the 0.786 Interesting, interesting. Uh, Orange Lambo. Hey, George, will OpenSea switching to Seaport protocol affect ETH price? I don't, I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think so at all. It'll help with ETH fees so now there won't be as much congestion if there's a hot nft collection that comes out but as for affecting ETH's price directly i don't i don't really think so um <laughs> people are still asking about soul is Sol a good pickup? Sol actually started moving pretty heavily yesterday. So it's closing in close to $40. Oh, my internet. My internet just cut out for a second there. Uh, I was just talking about Sol. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of recent FUD about Solana because of Sol Lend, and people are confused. Sol Lend is just a, you know, a lending project. Uh, DeFi project on top of Solana it has really nothing to do with Solana other than the fact that they are on Solana. But a lot of people recently, you know, 
uh, worried about Soland and whether or not Solana and this one whale on Soland is uh, is go face liquidation and more sell pressures, right? Uh, that's legit, but it has nothing to really do with Solana. Solana's ultimate uh, thing is they need to figure out how to make sure their network doesn't continue to crash, right? That's the big thing. But recently, I think a lot of people are confused by the two. But overall, I think Solana will get through it. Especially, I got done saying about Sam Bankman-Fried. He loves Solana. He's never going to let Solana die, I don't believe. Um, so they're definitely very heavily backed. And, you know, it's still one of the major L1s out there. In your opinion, is money in BlockFi interest account right now safe? I would say they are probably the safest out of the ones that exist because they exist in America and they are already working with the SEC. But right now, overall, I think it's best to be securing your own crypto. It's best to have your crypto in your own wallets that you control just to be on the safe side. doesn't matter what you're using. It could be BlockFi. It could be Coinbase. It could be Gemini. It could be some of the major, major companies out there. I still think right now, especially now, right, is the time to be more careful, extra careful, and secure your own crypto. Um, Super Google, the ETH BDC chart shows a higher, no, a lower high this cycle. Any thoughts? Not really. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't have, I don't have any, I don't really have any thoughts. Basically, Ethereum is showing weak, weaker, weaker dominance, right? Versus Bitcoin. And right now it makes sense because whenever there is fear, people gravitate towards Bitcoin. Bitcoin has the most loyal holders, the, the most holders by far. And as the biggest market cap, so just those two, two things alone will make it stronger than anything else out there. Um, but Ethereum itself is, is a dominant powerhouse too, right? The gap between Ethereum and everything else is very vast. But as for Ethereum versus BDC, Ethereum is, is going to be weaker than Bitcoin pretty much forever, until maybe one day, if somehow the whole world embraces Ethereum um, and a market cap is above Bitcoin, and at that point, maybe the roles reverse. All right, guys, I'll let you go. Overall, Bitcoin is doing much better today, 21.5. I think this week will be a very telling week in terms of how strong Bitcoin is. Obviously, I showed you guys the Bitcoin, the purpose Bitcoin ETF. There's some large whale that just sold out. And I think it had a lot to do with that 17 bottom we saw on Friday heading into Saturday. But right now, we are definitely in recovery mode, right? There's still a lot of great, great fundamentals that's holding and driving Bitcoin up. And there's a lot of holders and newcomers into the space, right? So those are very positive things. But right now, there's still a lot of fear. But according to Bank of America, when there's a lot of fear, that's when you want to buy, right? You buy when others are fearful. So uh, stay strong, my friends. I will see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.